The platoon commander was surprised to see a fairy woman in the tent. The woman turned to him and asked him to tell her the group he belongs to. The man introduced himself as Vengeance. He told the fairy that he is the commander of the third platoon in the second company. With a serious look on her face, the woman asked Vengeance if he was taught to address his superior by their race and his company. The man looked down and apologized to the woman. Ancred was surprised to hear that the fairy is their superior. He realized that the woman is the new commander of the fourth company. Our boy decided to introduce himself to his new commander. He told her that he is the leader of the fourth squad of the fourth company. The woman told our boy that she is expecting him to have some contributions because he is leading a group containing difficult members. After saying this, she turned around and walked to the entrance. Ancred was surprised to see this. He could not believe that the commander visited them in order to greet them. Before walking out of the tent, the commander turned around. She asked the ordinary soldier for his name. The man was surprised to hear this. With a nervous look on his face, the man told the fairy that his name is Krang. Ancred was surprised to see how the man was acting. Anyone could tell that the man just made up the name. Our boy could not believe that the man was acting rude in front of the company commander. He wondered if the man is a noble. The woman simply glared at the man when she heard his name. She turned around and walked out of the tent. Ancred was surprised to see this. He could not comprehend what was happening. In the evening, we see our boy checking out his hand. Ancred noticed that he could now put strength into his body. Our boy realized that most of his pain is already gone. He decided to start training. While our boy was putting on his gear, Vengeance raised his head and asked him about where he is going. Ancred told the man that he is going to the training area. Vengeance laid on the bed and called our boy an idiot. He believed that Ancred was trying to act tough even though he is a low-ranking soldier. The scene shifts and we see our boy holding a sword as he took a stance. While standing, Ancred tried to remember his last battle. The method is one of the few useful things that our boy spent a lot of money on when he was younger. Ancred remembered how he killed the insane soldier with his stab. Our boy wondered about how the battle would have ended if his stab was not successful. He knew that it is not smart for him to put all his eggs in one basket. He knew that he had to get another skill because he will die if his stab fails to kill his opponents. Ancred remembered how Rim fought on the battlefield with his axe. He remembered how dangerous each one of the man's attack was. Our boy believed that it will be best for him to replicate something similar to Rim's attacks. While he was thinking, someone told him that he is working quite hard. When Ancred turned to his right, he saw Krang next to him. The man asked our boy to tell him what he is doing. He told Ancred that his hands were twitching in the tent, and now he is currently spacing out. Our boy explained to Krang that his hand was twitching because he was training his grip strength. He told him that he is currently trying to replicate the last battle. Krang asked Ancred to tell him why he is going through such stress. Our boy explained to him that he does not want to get killed. The man asked our boy if he plans to achieve something by preserving his life. Ancred glared at the man when he heard his question. Our boy did not want to say his dream out loud. He knew that people would laugh at him. It is a dream that could not be fulfilled with Ancred's poor talent, however, he did not stop desiring to accomplish it, as the gentle breeze blew. Our boy raised his sword and told Krang that he wants to become a knight. The man was shocked to hear what our boy said. Ancred took a look at Krang after telling him his wish. He told the man that it is his first time seeing someone who did not laugh at his dream. The man stood up and told Ancred that he remembered something, as he walked forward. Krang told our boy that he has understood what he has to do after speaking to him. The man turned around and called our boy friend. With a smile on his face, Krang asked Ancred to remember him when he becomes a knight. Our boy was surprised to hear this. This was the first time that someone has ever supported his dream. The next day, we see a wandering minstrel and men singing song about a hero. When Ancred woke up, he heard Vengeance complain about the fact that they had not yet gotten breakfast. The man wondered if the soldiers wanted to eat the good food and give them the scraps. After waking up, our boy took a short leisurely walk around the camp. While walking, he bumps into Jackson. The man asked his squad commander if he is getting better. Ancred revealed to Jackson that the ointment works well. He thanked the man for giving him some of his ointment. Jackson asked his commander to return to the squad if he is thankful. At night, we see Krang wish our boy a good night. Ancred also wished the man the same thing. Vengeance was surprised to see this. He told the men that they are acting crazy. Our boy went asleep after doing nothing the entire day. The next day, Ancred hears the wandering minstrel singing the same song with the men. Our boy woke up when he heard the song. He did not understand why the minstrel would return to their camp when he is a wanderer. While our boy was looking around, 
Vengeance complained about not receiving the morning rations again. Ankrid did not understand why the man was complaining again. He remembered that Vengeance complained about the same thing yesterday. The moment he came upon this realization, our boy wondered if something had happened. He decided to confirm his suspicion. Ankrid took a walk and bumped into Jackson like he did yesterday. The man asked our boy the same question. Ankrid gave him the same answer and thanked him for the ointment. Just like yesterday, Jackson asked him to return to the squad if he is thankful. The moment Ankrid heard the man's response, he became certain that he was reliving the same day. Our boy remembered that the mysterious being told him that he will face another wall that will stop him. The mysterious being asked our boy to do his best to survive. Ankrid could not believe that he died while he was sleeping. This was terrifying to him because he died more hopelessly compared to the time he was stabbed. Even though he felt bad, our boy became more determined to overcome his current wall. He believed that he would be able to face this new challenge. At night, we see Ankrid thinking while he was on the bed. Our boy wondered about the person who killed him and how the person was able to kill him. Ankrid knew that any intruder would have to get through the camp's defense before reaching their tent. He believed that only knights could achieve such feats. Our boy quickly removed this idea from his head. He realized that his killer is a hidden assassin. He believed that the assassin must be among the soldiers. This is because the assassin knows the location of the medical barracks and they were able to conceal their presence. When Ankrid thought about someone who would be skilled in assassinations, he remembered the commander of his company. Our boy knew that a fairy's quiet and nimble feet would be perfect for assassinations. He believed that the reason the woman came earlier was to figure out the location of the medical barracks beforehand. Ankrid stared at the entrance. He wanted to confirm his suspicion. He decided to scream and alert the other soldiers once he sees the fairy. All our boy had to do was wait for the assassin. Unfortunately for him, someone stabbed him in the neck with a needle before he could move. Ankrid was shocked to feel a poisonous needle on his neck. Our boy could not comprehend what was happening. He did not even see the assassin step into the tent. He quickly put his hand on his neck and tried to pull out the needle. While struggling, Ankrid fell to the ground. Our boy could not even touch the needle neither could he speak. He realized that the poison was a potent numbing poison. He understood that the reason he died the first time was because of the poison. When our boy looked up, he noticed that vengeance had also been poisoned. The moment he turned to Krang, he saw the assassin next to him. The person raised their sword up and stabbed Krang in the chest. Our boy was shocked to see this. He grit his teeth in anger. The moment the assassin killed Krang, someone wearing a hood cuts a part of the tent open with a blade. The other assassin turned when they saw this person. Our boy was shocked to see that there was another assassin. The other assassin had long ears and was holding a weapon wrapped in leaves. Ankrid was surprised to see that his suspicion was true. He could not believe that the company commander was at the tent. The scene shifts and we see our boy return to the beginning of the day. Ankrid could not believe that this was the third time he was waking up the same day. Our boy could not believe that he could not detect the assassin's presence even though he was staying alert. The worst part was that he still had to fight his company's commander. Ankrid knew that even if he manages to defeat the assassin, it would be impossible for him to defeat his commander. Our boy felt helpless. He remembered that he had this same feeling a few days ago when he faced the insane soldier. Ankrid reminded himself that he still managed to defeat the soldier. Our boy assured himself that he would find a way as long as he does not give up. The scene shifts and we see Ankrid searching Vengeance's bed. The soldier was annoyed to see this. He told our boy that he is acting crazy. Ankrid searched the man's bed because he believed that the assassin might have already infiltrated the base since morning. Unfortunately for him he was wrong. Our boy decided to take his sword outside with him. He believed that he needed to be wary of everything. Vengeance was annoyed to see Ankrid holding his sword. He asked our boy if his training is to catch cockroaches with his sword. With a smile on his face, the man told our boy that the training is fitting for lowlife soldiers. Ankrid turned around and thanked the man for caring about him. Vengeance was annoyed to hear this. He called our boy an idiot and told him that he was being sarcastic. Ankrid did not know how to respond to the man because he was also being sarcastic. Vengeance asked our boy to leave the tent. He told him that he does not want to see his face. While the two were talking, Krang arrived at the entrance. The man was surprised to see that our boy and Vengeance were arguing again. He asked the two if he should return to the tent later. Ankrid asked the man to come in. Vengeance laid back on his bed and called both our boy and Krang annoying bastards. Ankrid watched Krang as he took care of his bedsheet. Due to how the assassins were observant of Krang, 
our boy could tell that he is their target. Ankrid became more curious about Krang's true identity. Our boy did not want to dig into something that his opponent was not willing to tell him without asking. However, since he had already gotten involved in the assassination, Ankrid believed that he needed to have some level of information. With a serious look on his face, our boy asked Krang to tell him what he is. This question surprised the man. Ankrid did not know why the man was surprised. He wondered if he asked the question the wrong way. He wondered if his conversational skills were as poor as Rim's. Krang thought about how he was going to answer the question. Vengeance raised his head up when he saw Krang thinking. The man was also curious about Krang's identity. Krang told our boy that he cannot tell him his true identity. Ankrid asked the man to tell him why. Krang revealed to him that his situation is quite complicated. Our boy did not know how to respond to this. He told the man that he understands. Vengeance was shocked to see this. He called Ankrid a dumbass and told him that he should have never bothered to ask his question if he was going to accept such a poor answer. Vengeance turned to Krang and told him that he knows he is not from their country because of his manners. He pointed his finger at him and asked Krang to tell him which country's spy he is. Krang's expression changed when he heard this. His face became serious. Vengeance was shocked to see the look on the man's face. Krang walked up to Vengeance with a serious look on his face. The man told Vengeance that he has not and will never betray the kingdom. Ankrid could tell that Krang was different when he looked into his eyes. The man had an aura like that of a knight. Vengeance immediately regained his composure. He asked Krang if he is allowed to speak to his higher-up rudely. With a smile on his face, Krang apologized to the man. Although Krang had the aura of a knight, Ankrid could tell that he was not a knight because he would not have been powerless in front of a mere assassin. However, Krang was definitely hiding something important at night. We see Krang wish our boy a good night. Ankrid also wished him the same thing. To our boy's surprise, Vengeance did not say anything. Our boy realized that Vengeance was scared of Krang after what happened earlier. While thinking, Ankrid stared at the entrance. He knew that they would all die if the assassins were to barge in. Our boy stood up and grabbed his sword. Vengeance was surprised to see this. He asked Ankrid to tell him why he is not going to sleep. Our boy turned to the man and told him that assassins are going to barge into their tent very soon. He asked Vengeance to cooperate with him if he wants to live. Vengeance was surprised to hear this. He laid back down and told Ankrid that he has lost his mind. Our boy was not surprised to hear this. He believed that this is the natural reaction anyone would have if they heard such a thing. While he was looking at Vengeance, Ankrid heard someone ask about how he was able to know the plan. Our boy was shocked to hear this voice. He knew that it belonged to the assassin. Before he could take a step, the assassin sent a needle through the tent. The needle slit Ankrid's throat. As he fell to the ground, our boy wondered about the time the assassin got into the base. The person also killed Vengeance with a needle and stabbed Krang in the chest like before. The scene shifts and we see our boy wake up to the song of the minstrel for the fourth time. Ankrid realized that he will never know when the assassin get in and he cannot get Vengeance and Krang to assist him. He decided to inform his superiors in order to get reinforcement. Unfortunately for Ankrid, he was quickly turned down. His superior asked him if he had gone insane. The man asked him to leave before he gets beaten up. At night, Ankrid stood next to the tent. He decided to try to predict the moment the assassin will appear and scream before they start killing them. Our boy carefully watched the entrance. After calculating the time the assassins were going to appear, Ankrid decided to scream. Unfortunately for him, he got stabbed in the throat before he could make a sound. After the assassin killed him, they ran into the tent and finished the job. Ankrid realized that the assassin is too fast for him to handle. In his next regression, our boy decided to wait outside the tent in order to ambush and defeat the assassins before they do anything. Unfortunately for him, he was killed with another poisonous needle. Our boy did not think of the fact that he could not fight an enemy that he could not see. In his next regression, Ankrid stood directly in front of the entrance, however, this did not change his fate. Our boy got stabbed with the poison needle from behind. As long as Ankrid could not see the poison needle, he will continue to die without being able to do anything. The scene shifts and we see Ankrid wake up to his 20th regression. Our boy could not believe that this was his 20th time dying without being able to do anything. However, this was not enough to break Ankrid's spirit. Our boy smiled and reminded himself that he has only died a mere 20 times. While walking around the base, Ankrid realized that he needed to first find a way to avoid the poison needle. He decided to think of a way to defeat the assassins after he has dealt with the needle. 
our boy realized that the person who would best know a way to avoid the attacks faster than the assassin can see is Jackson. While staring at Jackson from afar, Ingrid remembered what Rim told him about the man. Our boy asked Rim to tell him why he always calls Jackson a perverted wild cat. Rim revealed to his commander that Jackson is a dirty pervert bastard. He explained to our boy that Jackson never tries to fight his enemies head on, instead, he stabs them from behind and runs off. Rim told his commander that only a cunning and perverted wild cat behaves that way. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. Ingrid walked up to Jackson. The man was surprised to see his commander. He asked him about the state of his injuries. Our boy knew that someone like Jackson could easily take care of the assassin, however, he could not take the man into his tent because he did not have the power to do so. More importantly, Ingrid believed that this was a wall that only he must climb. Our boy decided to become Jackson. With a serious look on his face, Ingrid asked Jackson to tell him how to stop someone like him from stabbing him from behind. Jackson was surprised to hear this question. With a deadly look in his eyes, the man told his commander that he does not know what to do. He explained to Ingrid that no one has ever survived his ambushes. Our boy was shocked to hear this. Guys we have come to the end of our video. If you guys want part 4 of this recap, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button for more recaps. See you guys later.